We're very grateful for all of these folks who came and worked with our juniors this year. The interviewers were held during the school day from Monday, March 7th through Friday, March 11th. Makeup interviews were scheduled uh, for absentees on the 28th and 29th. Most students were scheduled for interviews during their study halls uh, and freeze. Uh, some students had to be scheduled from their English classes, uh, but for the most part, class time wasn't taken. What impressed us most this year was student attitudes. Every student in the class took the exercise seriously uh, in some manner. Practically all the resumes were logically arranged and appropriately typed. Most, most of the students dressed up or at least knew to apologize if they didn't. And all of them were prepared to talk or ask about something important to them. Each one was appropriately nervous but sufficiently confident and they all felt good about themselves when they finished. It was the presence of the interviewers from the real world that encouraged the students to try so hard. Outside help was crucial to this project. Students were aware of the value of the interviewers' contributions to their own futures. Uh, suggestions for next year include, uh, one, a larger pool of interviewers, including more college admissions and alumni personnel. Uh, two, a system to match students with interviewers more closely along lines of interest. And three, scheduling to be done over a longer period of time, um, <clears throat> possibly so the interviews could, run, interviews could run a bit longer and also for less, uh, less of taking students out of classes. In closing, a few quotes from this year from a male student upon being asked how his interview went. Uh, great, I got the job. From a female student who had been visibly and audibly nervous before her interview, after being asked how it went, no problem, he was such a sweetheart. Uh, three, from a faculty member who walked into guidance scratching his head. What's going on with the juniors? They all, lo they all look so nice all of a sudden and from an interviewer from away about a student she just interviewed. Where do all these wonderful students come from? That was the response to, from a lot of interviewers. Um, we followed up. Um, I want to give you a copy of two sample evaluations that interviewers filled out and are shared with the students. One very positive and one critical. Interview. And I'll give you two samples of the evaluation that was done by the students of the experience about a week later. Thank you. Thank you. That is wonderful. I'm sure, it's very helpful for the students in their you know, college interviews. Madam Chairman, uh, Judy Liberty is with us to tell us a little something about the. French exchange program. Uh, the youngsters have been here and she's leaving shortly. Liberty. This will be done in French this evening. <laughs> Dirk was right when he said he thought we were leaving fairly soon and it is Sunday. But before I talk about that end, I'd like to just take a look at the history of this program for those of you who are not particularly familiar with it. I believe this is the fifth year that this sort of program has taken place in our school and it started before I came here. And during those years, we have skipped maybe two or three years. They're not consecutive, but this is the fifth time that we have had this exchange program with the same school, which is La Celle saint Claude, which is a town about 20 minutes outside of Paris. And it begins in September when the students are chosen to participate in the program. And at that time, they begin writing letters with a student with whom they've been matched for the exchange. And hopefully by the time they arrive here, then they will have had some communication with the students. So it begins pretty early. And this year they came, uh, if you have all of you, a look at the schedule of some of the things that they did, is there anyone who needs one of these? It looks like a calendar.
that just gives you an idea of some of the things that happened during late March and early April when they were with us. Uh, we did several things that were especially fun and interesting and new this year, and I might mention a couple of those. It is rather traditional. They like to go see how maple syrup is made, and the trip to Kiza Falls is, is often a highlight. We're not always able to do that, but we try to give them things that are special to the state of Maine that they might not ever see in another place, and certainly maple syrup is one of those. Uh, they were able to be invited to go on a boat trip for several hours by a professor at USM. They took a day at the State House, visiting both the Maine Museum and the State House itself, and the Blaine House, and one of the French boys was invited to play the piano there. That was an added treat for him and for everyone who got to listen to him. And they did get to speak with the governor that day, so it was a very, very special day for them. Um, another fun activity that we tried this year was that we rented a good part of the tennis racket. It's not something that the French students are used to having a facility like that. And they ran from the tennis court to the racquetball court to the uh, handball to the volleyball. And those of us who were um, sitting and watching played bridge or I even tried a little volleyball, I have to tell you the truth. But everyone was in and out of all these activities. The parents and the students, all the families were involved. The families brought their brothers and sisters, so it was a, is a wonderful family evening and something that um, I think everyone enjoyed. When they left us, they spent two days in Boston, followed by two days in New York, and they arrived in France on Saturday, this past Saturday, having left us on Tuesday of last week. And on looking back at it, I haven't had a long time to do that, really, because they've only been gone a short time, but a couple of things that I think were especially good this year is that they became integrated more into our school system. I feel as if the whole school benefited more by the fact that some of the teachers out of the foreign language department particularly invited them to join their class for a particular event. For example, Ray Cooper, who is a history teacher, and he happened to be doing a unit on the French Revolution, invited them to participate. And another history teacher, Marty Costello, invited the entire group to speak to his senior seminar on politics in France. Those are just a couple of examples, but I really felt good that they were not just with the language students. They were spread amongst the school and were invited to participate in different aspects of our school than just the language <coughs> department. Of course, it goes without saying that the whole school benefited from the language point of view because they were in our classes. I had them speak a lot when they attended the French classes and naturally the teacher would come and uh, do some teaching and they got to listen to the real thing for a lot of days. And so it wasn't just the 10 students that are going who benefited from this, but I think all language students and really a good part of our school as a whole. So if you want to take a look on the back side, I'll just give you a quick rundown of some of the things that are coming up for us as we leave on Sunday. We're not too excited. Um, I've listed here some of the things that we know we're going to do, and of course there will be more. Um, obviously, you see lots of museums on the list, uh, headed naturally by the Louvre. Um, there are several things here that include um, the, the viewing of a film at the House of Christian Dior. Um, the meal that you see in the middle, the Chamber of Commerce Cooking School is a real treat because these are students who are learning to serve meals and uh, uh, students who are learning to cook meals and they like to have people come in and they do a beautiful job and it's fun to see how it's done. We're going to take a trip for three days to Normandy and I've listed a few of the things that we'll see there. Um, the last of which is the uh, cathedral at Sharp. We'll spend most of the days in part in the school, just as they did when they were here. Some days we'll spend all day in school going to classes with them. Some of the days we'll spend perhaps half of the day going to classes, leave in the afternoon, get on the train, and be into Paris in 20 minutes and spend the afternoon and perhaps the early evening in Paris itself. So um, we try to do some of both, just as they did when they were here. And that's it in a brief summary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Madam Chairman, before I go to the uh, English program, I'd like to uh, just have a few reports on a number of the uh, fine things that have happened this time of the year. First, uh, we almost need a staff of 20 to cover some of the activities because very often they're on the same evening. I have uh, heard a number of remarks relative to the elementary curriculum program uh, that uh, was highly successful on the elementary level, and I think some of our board members attended that. Jen, would you have a few words? Sure. Yeah, I was there, and it was absolutely wonderful. The teachers worked very hard. It was in at Pond Cove Cafeteria, and in every part of the cafeteria, there was a display set up with a different um, area of study. Uh, the whole language, math their way, skiss science, music and art. And the parents had an opportunity to go around and try some of the hands-on materials and and, um, and look at the displays. And then we all sat down and, and had a wonderful presentation. The teachers really outdid themselves. It was a terrific evening. And uh, a few nights later, the arts fair at the high school, if you missed Picnic on the Battlefield, the artwork and the music, you certainly missed the fine program. That was the same night as the science fair. So did someone catch the science fair? I, I would love to speak about the science fair. It was absolutely fabulous, and I thank the uh, middle school science teachers and all the <coughs> middle school students who worked so hard on their science projects and were very proudly displaying the absolutely incredibly well done interesting projects that they did. Parents were out as usual in droves uh, to support the work of the students and to enjoy everybody's not only their own students uh, project but the other students projects as well. And I, I couldn't imagine myself how anything could be more varied. There were projects on solar energy, uh, lots of projects having
in the interest of brevity, it would be to raise six areas, and if you'd like to ask questions within those areas, uh, please feel free.
I move, I move that the matter be tabled until the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting that it may be much more difficult to fill a one-year temporary position than to be able to advertise for a position uh, to fill, uh, fulfill our own needs. Is there a second for the tabling motion? Mm -hmm. Did you have a motion on the floor that had been seconded? We did. I believe the tabling mm -hmm. motion is in order. We have a tabling motion and a second. Is there further discussion about that? Those in favor of the motion to table this request? Five to nothing. Thank you, Wayne. <coughs> uh, the next item of consideration of resignations. Gail Laffey, co-director of the community school. I'd like to resigning the position effective July 1. You see her plans here. Superintendent recommends acceptance. Need a motion to accept the resignation of Gail Nappy as co-director of community services. It is sad. We're going to miss her. This Oh, I very do. much. <laughs> <laughs> but we need a motion in any case. Priscilla moves that we accept the resignation of Gail Nappy as co-director of community services, effective July 1st, 1988. Is there a second? We're at a pond. Second side. Is there further discussion? I'd just like to say what an excellent job she and Sue have done and the contribution to the community we just can't measure. It's been wonderful. I think that you expressed the feelings and the appreciation of the entire, this board and the entire community for the outstanding, absolutely outstanding, excellent job which uh, Gail has done for a long time. Uh, we uh, can't tell you how much we're going to miss you. Those in favor of accepting this motion? Yes. Patricia Fagan, reading and writing assistant at the high school, resigning, moving out of state, move acceptance, mm -hmm. recommend move acceptance. Mm -hmm. Any motion to accept the resignation of Patricia Fagan as a teacher's assistant in reading, writing, laboratory capabilities at high school? Loretta moves. Second? Second. Still a second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Five to nothing. The next item on the agenda is the consideration of a request to allow the seventh and eighth grade students to take their Washington trip during school time. for everybody to hear if you go Over there. Over here, Phil, so you can make a speech. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this really is a what I planned. Uh, but be that me. Several years ago, Mr. Moore asked me to accompany him to Washington every year with a uh, group of 7th and 8th graders. And it's been a very successful trip, I think, for a variety of reasons. As a history teacher, it enables me to do some things with um, some of the places in Washington that I think are, are of interest. But what's happened, and I think we've been, we've been feeling the pressure for the last couple of years. It came to a head this past summer, and I'll explain why. Um, each year we travel during April vacation, and it's a great time. It's a great time of the month, great time of the year to be in Washington. However, every other tour company in the country sends their kids to Washington. 
There are in excess of 10,000 kids running around the Capitol, and we are a small group that runs around with them. And what happens is, is that we are beginning to be forced out because we take so few numbers of kids, maybe 30 or 40, compared to 100 to 150 that are sent by other schools. As a result of that, our bookings are becoming very difficult for the Lakeland Tour Company to make because of our size. Therefore, we tend to get bumped, which means that some of the sites that we have been normally going into, the White House, uh, the FBI building, the Senate building, as far as a tour, we've been able to get into the Congress up until last year, uh, have been denied. So the pressure that we're feeling is that we try to conduct and to provide the kids an opportunity to go down and see some historical sites legitimately. Last year, we got bumped out of three places, and we had a parent, uh, very rightfully so, wrote us a nice letter and asked, <coughs> and expressed her disappointment and asked uh, why we couldn't see some of the things that were listed on the agenda. And the answer was is that we just couldn't get in to see them. Several of the communities in Portland or greater Portland that go, Falmouth, Yarmouth, that go to the, uh, take the tours and go to Washington, go during school time. I'm not particularly um, concerned about when we go. It's just a matter of trying to stay away from April vacation. We chose not to go this year. We had a lot of kids that expressed a, some interest in going. We had some parents express some interest, and we, and we quite frankly said we'd rather not because the concerns that the parent expressed to us were real to me. Um, we invited her in. We sat down and we chatted with her, and I thought it was a very um, positive meeting, but it began to make me realize that unless you can do what you say you're going to do, you better not do it, so we decided not to. Talking with Roley this year, we thought that we would again come to you and say that it has been a successful trip. We've had a lot of fun. Um, I think the kids, the kids have gotten a lot out of it. And we would like to continue it, but the problem is it's a three-day trip. If we could have Thursday and Friday go back on a Saturday, we would eliminate a large number of the crowds that we've been dealing with, get into the places that we say that we're going to get into, legitimately get into them, um, see some of the people that are representing the state in Washington, because a lot of them leave April vacation, or they're just unattainable. Um, and that's basically it. Thank you. Your question? Are you, 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 you going to go this year? And you want to go this year? No, sir. Skip it this year. Yes, sir. Do it again next year. Yes, sir. Do it on. Have you considered going during February vacation? I've been there during February vacation. There's no one there. Uh, no. I, I it sounds like an easy solution. Yeah, it um, seems like to leave school is to authenticate all the times that yeah, we I know. kids not to leave with their parents, and then we take a sanctioned school move away. Uh, I think I see this differently than I would see the French home state program, where they're, you know, they spend two weeks with their teachers going over exactly what's expected of them while they're yeah. away, and they go in the classroom and, and uh, you know, have a guided study time each day. Um, that's an interesting thought, I hadn't. It hadn't been suggested. We have talked with the um, with the tour company, Lakeland Tours, and I, I think, quite frankly, we got into a mindset about April vacation or sometime other than that because of, I think, their own convenience, and that's when they bring most of their kids in. That's a good thought. We'll consider it. That was going to be my suggestion. Was have you looked at February vacation? Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yes. Um, is there a, a, a way for kids to go if if maybe they can't afford it or their parents can't afford it? Um, is there a fund available? No, ma'am. Is that something that could be accomplished? Um, only if it became... Yarmouth, for example, does have a program where they take their entire eighth grade. Everybody goes. It becomes a big fundraiser. It's a big deal with them, and, and they pack up and they take 110 kids. They do provide. They have a fund that's generated uh, as a result of so many kids going in so many fundraisers that they do provide uh, whatever the number of kids. I think maybe it's four or five kids that they do pick up either part of it or the entire amount. Our groups generally run anywhere between 25 and 30 kids. So there really isn't any way that we can generate um, any additional monies Is this for the kids. Really a school sponsor, no, ma'am. No. So that's it really isn't. I mean, it's it, we don't. Do, I don't personally get any money out of it. I don't think uh, I know Rowley doesn't get any money out of it. It's just, it's it used to be cheap. It's it's getting up there. I guess taking trips is getting expensive. If it were going to be those during school time instead of a vacation, then 
that would be, I think, a different mm. I, one of the things that, that concerned me when I read this is that you, if you take a third of the class, for example, 30 students out of, you know, 30 few out of 100, that's two-thirds of the class, you and two of the teachers are gone, and basically that means there are 60 children being sort of babysat for for two full school days by substitutes, and that, mm -hmm. I think, is a problem. Um, and then furthermore, when the 30 or... 30 couple come back, the material that should have been covered in those two days, and in fact maybe has been covered by a substitute, will be redone because there's so much of the class that missed that work. It just seems to me that <coughs> when there's another vacation option to explore, it certainly wouldn't be the time to say there's no other way to accomplish this trip. I think it's important that the students uh, get to Washington if they're able to. This is a good vehicle for it, but I would for sure like to see another vacation investigated before we decide that there's no other way than to take two full school days away from these students and from basically the rest of the class as well. Thank you. Right, yes? No, I, I just want to say that uh, Mr. Moore and Mr. Jewett are very good to take these kids down to Washington because I'm sure it is not easy, particularly in all of the commotion with all of the people, uh, <coughs> keeping everybody rounded up and they're going in the same direction. I think that was probably, uh, particularly on a hot day, and standing in line uh, deserves a Congressional Medal of Honor. Absolutely. Uh, so, the consideration of the request to allow 7th and 8th grade students to take their Washington trip during the school time, um, I think you've heard the Sorry. feelings of this board. I think we'd like to hear back whether that trip works out for a February vacation. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and uh, I would think I'll give that it some thought. We'll talk to Lakeland to us. A very good option. They may not have mentioned it only because it doesn't fit into their time schedule, and, and therefore it hasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. I think if we raise the issue, mm -hmm. uh, it I'm may be. I'm sure they're not the only tour company as well, so that, that is might also be something. True. And I agree that I think you're good scouts to do it. I'm sure. It's a full-time job while you're there. It's busy. <laughs> 24 hours a day, i.e. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Yes, ma'am. And thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda, other business. We have a request. We have a request from... from yep, you can speak about that. Uh, this is a request from the Viking uh, facility on Scott Dyer Road. Uh, they need transportation to the circus. They like to use our buses. They have their chaperone or covered for insurance. It would be a very nice gesture. Uh, I move that uh, we do it. Is there a second? Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Five to nothing. Uh, we have, it has been removed from the agenda, the consideration of the request for, uh, of the superintendent for an executive session. So the item we have remaining is to set the date for the next school board meeting, which will be May. Oh, good point. Yeah, May 10th, second Tuesday. Uh, excuse me. that un unlike uh, Mr. Moore and Mr. Jewett, I will be in Washington on May 10th. <laughs> uh, Ken, is that meeting? Uh, well, Jesus. is it possible? Does it screw everybody up to do it on Monday night? Oh, town council can't do that. We have had meetings on Monday night before, and we've had them upstairs. It's oh, not right. possible to, to be televised, but the television is, seems to be an uh, important thing. We could move what it to the Wednesday? 17th. Well, we could move it to the 11th. The 17th of May is not graduation, no. The 17th of May is the middle school playground. Well, how about Wednesday the 11th and the day after the 10th? How about Wednesday the 11th? Is that... I, 
I think either Monday or, are you saying you're free Monday or Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Monday uh, uh, and Wednesday, either one. Okay. I just. I think uh, something else is here on that Wednesday, on Wednesday night, so either way we cannot meet here, if I'm correct about it. On the Tuesday and the Wednesday we cannot meet here? No, on the Monday say? and Wednesday oh, we I have see. to meet upstairs. Is it not the planning board or zoning board of appeal or... If you could check that out and then we can go with Monday, would you prefer? It doesn't make any difference, although I do think that it's a, a, a lot of people, a lot of people do watch on television, find out what's going on with the schools and mm -hmm. don't, aren't able to get here. And I think it's important actually to, uh, Give people to do it in this room so that people can see what's going mm -hmm. on and what we're up to. The, how is the date of May 17th? That's a Tuesday night. That's excellent. Uh, excellent. We still have to check to make sure that the council chambers are available, but we will set our uh, the meeting, the next meeting, the May meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board on May 17th. And if we have to change it for a conflict, uh, we'll either change our location or we'll talk about a new date and publish it in plenty of time. Okay. Since we're on the May dates, could I just list a few more so that uh, you could list them while you're listing them? May 11th, 3.30 in the afternoon, meeting of the search committee for the principalships. May 2nd, meeting with the council members. That's a 6 o'clock meeting. I think they're going to serve dinner. May 5th is the community services, if needed, and if it's not done on the 2nd, the May 23rd is a public hearing, and May 17th is the school board. Public hearing on May 23rd? Public hearing on May 23rd. Now, the only thing I, oh, in April 28th is the NESDEC report in public, and I think it's also, I'm told, the candidates night. But that's unfortunate, but there are just so many things going on. It's also the team night for the awards. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, I think it would be well to ask for, uh, to notice a meeting for 6.30, the same night as the NISDEC meeting, so that we can address the voting of our budget at that time. So that we don't have to come out two nights. We're meeting with NESDEC at 7.30. Why don't we set a meeting at 6.30? By that time, Dee will have ample time to get the budget prepared. We will have to have time to look it over. And we can vote on it at that time after we have the document in hand. Well, The third Tuesday is planning board. Um, then we need to go back. Why don't we go back to Wednesday the 11th or Monday the 9th? But the 9th is town council. So the possibly Wednesday the 11th. I don't know anybody in here Okay, so that might be better. You know for sure the 17th is busy. Why don't we set the school board date? We cancel it for the 17th. We set it for um, May 11th, and that we will definitely, definitely meet on that day. If this chamber is available, we'll meet here. If not, then we'll meet upstairs. So that the next meeting will be on May 11th. <coughs> Um, Daryl, while we're on days, uh, you mentioned the meeting for the principals uh, to meet with the committee and decide on which principal candidates to interview. Uh, would you give just a quick response about uh, how the candidate pool is looking? Yeah. The high school, we have approximately 100 candidates, and uh, the next two weeks the, the paperwork will be finished. We have about 75 for the middle school, and uh, the deadline is over, but, uh, you know, once they apply, we allow the letters and the credentials and all that sort of thing. So they're filling up very swiftly, and I'm very pleased with the, uh, the number. I don't see the qualities there. Are you going to break those two meetings? I mean, that we're saying 3.30, but that's two committees. Are you going to 
have one meeting earlier and one later, or what are you going to do? I think, I think we'd like, I'd like to have one meeting for the whole group as to how we're going to go about it, and then we would be on our own, separate committees. So I'd like to have the, the, the process the same for both groups. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a nice way to get it all done at one time. If we meet that date and select candidates that date, I I don't think we will have finished our paperwork by that day, honestly. By May, whatever. Uh, credentials while well, we're coming in. That's what date is that? May eleventh. Uh, it's a month away from now. You don't think that most of the paperwork will yeah, be in? Yeah, we should have it by then, definitely, because mm -hmm. we should be started starting to interview them. Mm -hmm. so, then probably what we should do is meet once together and then break up. Mm -hmm. You can't break up, you have to be in two places. We'll have to have two meetings. So why don't we meet together and then decide the second meeting? Okay. Yeah, that will depend on the people's schedules, yeah. I'm right. sure. And where we are and what we've all done, how much homework, and that sort of thing. Okay, is there any other business? Is there, you have any other business to bring before the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? Priscilla? Second? Beretta? Those in favor? No? I'm sorry? Harold has other business. Well, I don't know, Bradley. What do you think? Whoa! Look at that! Wow!
Boy, Johnny, thank you very much. What a great, what a great helper you were. Thank you. Wow. Well, this tuba, as you guys can see, this tuba is really big. And let's ask Bradley to play, play some notes, maybe even a melody on this huge tuba. Thank you. 
Thank you. Could anybody actually see the music coming out of our bells? Yeah. Wow. This is John. This is John. Can you say good morning to John? And John plays the most interestingly shaped brass instrument. Look at this. My trumpet goes straight out with the bell in front. When I play, you see the bell hanging at you. But when John plays, his French horn, which is curled around and around and around like a garden hose. Look at his bell. When he plays, his bell it, it faces backwards. John, would you play uh, would you play a couple of notes on your French horn? Oh, that's pretty. French horn has a pretty sound. And look at the size of the bell of the French horn, how much bigger it is than the trumpet. Much, much bigger. John, why do you put your hand in the bell of the French horn? Well, it keeps it warm on a cold morning. Sounds like the best best brass instrument to play in the wintertime, doesn't it? No, really, why? That helps to change the sound. It helps give it a real mellow sound. Oh, it makes it sound real pretty. Do you think John, uh... And then with the hand? Ooh, pretty, isn't it? Hey, John, would you play a melody for the kids, please? Does anyone know the name of that? What is that? Prayer John, would you sing along if John plays? Will you sing along with John? Okay, let's try it. I don't know how my French is. I'll try it too. Ready?
Did you hear our secrets we were whispering? Yeah. They were real quiet, real quiet. Well, our last instrument in the brass quintet is what I think the funniest instrument. Well, every time we say that, Mark, who plays the trombone, feels a little bad. And we mean it in a nice way. But, well, okay, would you ask Mark to come up? Would you say, Mark, will you come up, please? And he brought his trombone. But, but Mark, wait a minute. The trombone looks a lot different than the trumpet and the French horn. It's, well, you don't have any valves like we do. So we can move our fingers and play lots of notes. How do you play lots of notes? All you have is that, what, do you, what is that thing? This is called a slide. A slide, so that's a slide trombone. Well, how do you get your notes? Can you show us? But how fast can you move your slide? <laughs> wow, that's impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, can you play a melody? Will you play a melody, please, on your trombone? No. Glissando. Will you say that? Glissando? Yeah. Mark, would you play a glissando, please? Can you play a little a little melody using a glissando? Wow, isn't that great? Will you give Mark a big round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Well, can you guys help us out with this next song, please? We need, we need a rhythm section. We need some people that will help us keep a real good beat. Take your right hand, okay? And I want you to tap your right hand onto your right knee with me. Ready? Go. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, very good. Let's ask Bradley to play along with this on his tuba. Bradley, will you please play with us? Now, don't tell Bradley, but we're going to fool him. We're going to gradually get faster, 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 Thank you. 
round of applause for Mark on his trombone solo. That was great, Mark. Well, we'd like to sing some Christmas carols. Actually, we're going to play them, and we'd ask, like to ask you guys to sing them. But can I have some volunteers to help us out up here? We need some uh, big, big voices, volunteer voices. Can you come? Please? And how about in the very back in the red and green sweater? Will you come on up here, please? And how about the little girl in the purple dress? Will you come up? Yeah, come on up. And uh, how about in the red in the red jumper right there in the front? Will you come up and help us? Great. Hmm? And uh, would you like to come up too? Great. And let's see. Red shirt? Yeah, come on. And we need, let's see, one more. Uh, uh, let's see. In the blue shirt. Yeah, the big boy in the blue and black shirt. Come on up. Now, we need uh, Kazoo to help us, but I don't know if she's back from shopping yet. Will you guys call for Kazoo? Kazoo. Oh, you bought something. What are those guys? Jingle bells? Well, oh, wonderful. Oh, I know. We're going to let these kiddos up front use the jingle bells while we're singing Christmas carols. Um, you know, we need somebody else, though. Anybody out there have a big white? Well, now wait a minute. Anybody out there have a big beard? And uh, dressed in red and with a big fat belly? Any of you guys answer that description? No. We're looking for food. Santa Claus, that's right. I'll tell you what, let me give you the signal. You guys call out for Santa Claus, and let's see if he's around. Ready? Yeah, he's back there. Hey, Santa, come on up front so we can sing some Christmas carols, please. We're getting all these jingle bells. Hand it out, and we got Santa, and we got Kazoo up here. Tell you what, why don't we sing Jingle Bells? You guys ready to sing? All right, here we go. Thank you. 
Well, we would really like to thank you guys for being a fantastic audience and being great 